It looks like we have one person from the public here who we know well, that is Laura Baker. Hi, Laura. Hi, how are you? Good. Sorry, I'm lurking. I'm on my treadmill, lurking Excellent. in the background. <laughs> okay, great. All right. You, you'll obviously know to chime in if you have any comments. Right? I do. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, all right. No public comments. So we need to go to the minutes of November. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I suggest we not make any motions or take any votes. Oh, yeah. That's probably what we need to not do, right? We'll have to put that off. Um, all right. Well, moving right along, obviously. Um, agenda item four, discuss next steps for the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund. All right. So let me let me summarize. Um, We've been talking about this for a while. In fact, at our last meeting, Laura, you were there and gave us a lot of good information. Out of that, we developed a very small subcommittee, Edgardo, you, you um, motioned to do this, of me, Gwen, Hannah, and you. Um, we had an almost impossible time finding a meeting time that we could all do. And we simply were not able to meet. Um, when we finally established the meeting time, several people couldn't make it. So I think this is good information. I wanted to summarize my personal thoughts about this. Um, again, number one, we've been talking about this for a long time. Number two, um, the mayor and um, Carolyn Mish were at our uh, October meeting and they did not seem enthusiastic about an affordable housing trust fund. And in fact, they proposed several other ways that we could spend our time, um, including being sort of, uh, you know, doing more public education um, and, um, going to the meetings where there are people who are doubting their affordable housing projects in their neighborhood, et cetera. We then had Laura who came in November and made some other very good points. Um, but I, I've come to the following conclusion. Number one, that we don't even have enough people on the housing partnership. I don't believe we're really in a position to create or to do any more work on a municipal affordable housing trust fund, number one. Number two, um, we have gotten a number of people who said to us, we'd really like you to do more public education, um, you know, because uh, sort of countering the NIMBY movement, et cetera. Um, so here is what I wanna propose. Um, my thought is, we'll open it up to discussion, is that we put this idea to rest for a while. I don't know if it's a year or whatever. We just put the idea of the municipal housing, affordable housing trust fund that we um, are kind of trying to revive on the back burner. We focus on other things um, including something that Keith is going to talk about in the next agenda item. And uh, we can come back to this later on in the fall or the winter when things have moved along and we have maybe other thoughts or other energies about it. So I wanted to open that up to discussion for people. Keith? Uh, yeah, uh, Carmen, I just want to acknowledge that Gwen is in the meeting, so I believe you have Gwen. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, Gwen. Great. You're here. I was so involved in my little summary that I didn't see you. Anyway, thank you for attending. Um, so we have Gwen. Richard? I think your point's well taken that there is probably no harm at this juncture to 
you know, spend more time on it. I did want to note a couple things. One is that, you know, when I read uh, the Globe and I should, the Boston Globe, and when I probably should have sent some of these articles, a lot of the articles that talk about housing issues do talk about housing, municipal housing trust funds as one of the key ways to address housing problems. So, you know, and the new administration is talking about housing as a key thing. So I'm I'm reluctant to give up on it. And I will also just note historically, and it may not be true now, excuse me, may not be true now, but in the past, at the time when we were the sort of quasi-official body that actually evaluated projects for CDBG funds, uh, it added a different dimension to our work. And I think that appeals to people and we can't necessarily assume that what we might be doing now, which is very important work, that there might be a different magnetism if there was a group that actually was evaluating proposals and acting in that fashion. And just for people to think about, it's not, you know, just because this is not happening right here doesn't mean something over there might not develop interest. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. How about other people and comments? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Carmen. Hi, everyone. Happy uh, hey, year to all. Um, I, uh, I agree with um, most of what you said, Carmen, um, except that um, I thought it was a little too quick uh, to X the idea of a subcommittee um, based on the fact that we couldn't uh, meet, which was true. It, it was hard to find the time to. Um, but I'd be a lot more interested in trying to give that uh, another go so that we could actually get to sit down, at least a few of us, sit down and think a little bit more about it. I'm not um, uh, really comfortable with letting go of that idea for many reasons that we've discussed in the past. Um, and, um, and I still believe that we could do, uh, that, that would be actually a project that we could uh, focus on um, in the near future. So um, that would be my opinion. Thanks, Edgar. Other thoughts? Hannah? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, echo off of that. I also felt like, um, you know, the meeting, finding meeting times is difficult. I, I didn't share the opinion that it was actually that difficult to find a meeting time. I mean, it's always kind of hard around the holidays. Um, I think that when the, when it seemed like the slight difficulty of finding a meeting time led to the idea, like this entire idea being dismissed, um, I personally felt like a little bit surprised because it was so close to the holidays and I felt like it potentially maybe diminished the like the people who had stepped up and because it was something that I was excited and being a part of. So that was just something that I wanted to say is that I'm I'm totally up for seeing it happen again. And if that means we have to like do a doodle poll or something. Um, but you know, only only if other people are into that too. Okay, thanks, Hannah. Other people? So in response to Edgar, you and Hannah, I'll say that maybe, maybe I was too quick to dismiss, right? Based on, oh, here's information and we've been talking about this for a while. Um, I, I did anticipate that some people might say, oh no, we really want to go on with this, uh, with kind of furthering, right? This, um, this uh, proposal. Um, I think that I don't have the energy for it. And maybe that was one of the reasons that I jumped to that conclusion. So I admit that. So um, we could certainly continue that for people who want to. I think I would need to step, step out of that. Anyway, thanks for saying that, Hannah, because that, that does hit on 
you know. I think also one of the key, I mean, is that I think one of the key, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what the real answer is here. I know that this, it, it, there isn't a lot of interest in city officials to re revive this. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, we still don't have a funding source for it. So they may go hand in hand. If we identify that we have a way to get revenue into it, that may precipitate really bring the idea back to the mayor and city council again and, and seeing if it's um, now is the time to do it. Because it's not, and what's why create a trust or uh, revive a trust that has no, nothing in it, nothing to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thoughts? Gwen has her hand up. Gwen? Um, yeah, I was I was a little surprised that it got nixed so quickly. Um, and I mean, you know, it was kind of like, okay, but I still think that something could come out of a subcommittee. I think, you know, it would still be beneficial to sit, you know, hash it out together, you know, be able to like really like, maybe it could be something very focused i don't know but i mean i'm still up for it so thanks thank you gwen i did see um and um i was rereading this afternoon um an article in the gazette that southampton just got up and running a municipal housing municipal affording housing trust fund for their particular circumstances, et cetera. So um, yeah, anyway, good comments. Do we, do we wanna proceed to have people continue to work on this and research adjoining and nearby towns? I mean, I obviously would step out of that. I just cannot do it right now. Yeah, uh, Carmen, uh, you know, as you, as you guys said, um, you know, Wayne was on uh, last year at some point, and he kind of pushed back an idea. Um, and I, I had no idea. I had no experience in it. So I didn't um, kind of voice any of my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Carolyn on there, and she was not enthusiastic as well. Um, but just want to say there there's no support for this idea in the planning office um you know just from the outset i didn't want to give my opinion uh but I, as i kind of researched it i, I didn't see just practically the mechanics of it um didn't make sense in talking with sarah and how cpa works um and then just talking with funder um the different uh, people that we fund, you know, uh, there's only a few players in, in the city that are doing affordable housing, um, and it didn't it didn't seem like it made sense to um, have them go to another funding source. Um, so uh, I want I didn't want to prematurely kind of put that out there because I wanted you all to uh, do your own research, but I didn't. Um, you know, I don't see, at least in the planning office, there's there's not going to be rousing support for it. Uh, and I have a lot of, and so, and just the history of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, it was originally created uh, when one of the housing, Hathaway Farms, I believe, um, it was, it was affordable, and then it was coming offline, and as a going to market rate, and as part of a sale of the building, some of this money, uh, like $500,000, was put aside to basically create vouchers for people living in this. So some of the units would be affordable. Um, but over a few years, the, the money ran out. And then the last few minutes of their meetings were to say, hey, we're emailing people and knocking on doors for money, but uh, there's, there's no money. Uh, but that's just how it started. It doesn't mean that's not the future. Thank, thank you, Keith. So, um, if Hi, you know, yes, 
Um, yeah, I'd be interested in trying to get us together again at subcommittee and, and, and start doing a little bit of research. I understand um, the lack of support for the idea, but again, um, I'm not ready to give up on the research and, uh, and, uh, and thinking about uh, housing trust on it. And another thing that comes to mind also is that I feel like, you know, over the years, um, we as a committee just it just feels like um, like there's not a lot of place for us to uh, like we used to even do a lot more recommendations before, and it just seems like it just seems like in a lot of ways like um, maybe that's uh, the direction that our partnership should go is is really be a, a more meaningful part of city government uh, in regards to affordable housing and. Um, I think that would be um, a way to uh, have uh, have our expertise as a partnership and as a committee and our and our work uh, be more meaningful. Uh, I think the the funding uh, we can figure out uh, where it comes from. It's really about us um, wanting to do something uh, that focused because we have been used to for the last few years just. It's really not having a lot of, you know, uh, huge responsibilities. And I think we have an amazing group and we should have more responsibility and give ourselves more responsibility and make a, a much higher meaningful uh, contribution to, to our community when it comes to affordable housing. So that's one, that's one of the things that I've been uh, thinking about. But like I said, I'm willing to um, try and uh, get the subcommittee together again and take it from there. Thanks, Edgar. Thanks, Edgar. Richard? Yeah, I want to also, I think it's important to remember that we're not talking about forming an affordable housing trust fund. It's already there. Mm -hmm. And we are exploring whether there is a utility to either currently, or I would make the case, be ready to utilize it. And I think everything that I hear coming out of the state house is that housing is going to be a important push. And I, I believe that there may be funds that only can go to um, affordable housing trust funds. And we want to be aware and thoughtful and, you know, we could hurry up and get ready if that happens to be the case. But since it's already on our agenda, I, I think the discussion now is warranted. And, you know, I will, I, I don't happen to agree with sort of the rationale that's been longstanding in the city um, about whether or not the planning office supports it or not. But I don't think that's particularly relevant to the this stage of the exploration. I appreciate that Keith was candid with us, but once again, uh, that's just a long-standing uh, viewpoint that may not be relevant in the future. Other comments? So I, I just want to respond for yeah. a minute. I don't think there's any harm in, in reviewing this for the reasons that are being spoken about right now. Um, Another thing is, you know, I have done a lot of housing advocacy. I, I've done a lot, I've done a, written a lot of letters, I've gone to different meetings. And so I wanna to respond to something that Laura is talking about in the discussion in terms of like, you know, us being more out there, um, you know, out there advocating, you know, basically, and, you know, just out there, you know, standing up for housing. And like, I think what happens with me is I get caught up in a semester and I'm really busy, but if people are sending it to the right email, I can always come flying into a meeting or, you know, always, always be able to, you know, even with like some headway I can put into my calendar. Um, so, um, you know, I think like, you know, what Richard was saying, you know, there could be some funds that can only go to housing fund trusts. And so, 
we want to have a better understanding of that before throwing it out. And I think, yes, overall, Northampton does cover with, um, you know, the community preservation funds and everything like that. They, they do usually come up with the money. There's no dispute there about that at all. But we just want to be able to really take it apart and look at it piece by piece and just sort of what are other communities doing you know i know we've had a lot of meetings about this but i think if we had a little subcommittee to sort of delve into it maybe we'll find something you know maybe we'll find something maybe maybe we won't you know so yeah and just thinking more long term instead of like right now you know in this moment you know i'm thinking more of the long term as well all right, thank you, Gwen. This discussion reminds me of why it's so important to hear different voices and also Richard with you and Gordon having been on the housing partnership for a long time and Edgar, I think you too, I'm not sure how long you've been on it, but that historical, you know, mind, right? Over time really um, assists and I don't, I don't have that longevity. So thank you very much for checking me and for offering your own opinions. So we could do, now does anybody else have a thought? Because I want to make a proposal here. Okay, um, so we could do one of two things. We could, you know, people who want could say, I'd like to be on the subcommittee to continue to explore, call it an exploration. Or we could, you could think about it. We can come to come back to it next month and people can raise their hands. I leave it to you. Um, well, I'm available to be on a subcommittee. Sam too. I think, did we lose Edgar? It looks like we lost Edgar. Okay, I just wanted. Looks like we lost Edgar. Okay. <laughs> so we can, we can, yeah, this is obviously ongoing. We don't have to decide this now. Let's see if he comes back and we can come back to this. Okay. Anybody have any other comments before we move on? Okay, so I want to uh, go back to the minutes, but keep I, I think that your agenda item follows really beautifully on this. And can we first do um, agenda item number five, discuss the CHAPA municipal engagement light program and public support for housing. Yes, thank you. And I apologize. I'll probably cough in the middle of this. I just tested for COVID. Um, yeah, so uh, CHAPA, which is the Citizens in Housing, um, something or other out of Boston, it's a nonprofit. Um, and they get, they're much like MHP and Mass Housing. Uh, they do a lot of training. Um, they have a thing called the Municipal Engagement Light Program, and it's an app. It's a um, it's kind of a training they do, and it's really just a way to kind of uh, create um, collaboration and gather stakeholders. Um, so it's something we would have to apply for, but they come in and they help kind of give training and help really kind of do like a pre-launch for starting the stakeholder process um, and then there's a couple meetings uh, before the actual launch meeting. Um, then the launch meeting would be like all your stakeholders. Um, and this is usually kind of geared towards um, a specific project. There's a few projects that might need public engagement. Um, the um, Crafts Avenue behind City Hall. That's going to be a um, that may need some public education. Um, there's also some little a affordable housing that might be closer in time uh, at State Hospital. Um, and we've seen all sorts of housing have. Well, we we've seen um, different types of housing have you know community pushback. Um, so this is, you know, if, you know, I'm looking at this or the city's look, you know, our office look on this as a way to kind of uh, refocus, also sharpen our tool, sharpen our, our saw blades is, and getting better at community engagement. 
um, and having some support along the way. Um, and if we can do that in a focused way, um, but it would be, I imagine it'd be a lot of work. It'd be, um, I don't, there'll probably be a few extra meetings besides the housing partnership. Um, but excuse me, it's an application process and, you know, we wouldn't move forward with it unless the, there was, you know, hundred percent enthusiastic support from the, the partnership to be a partner in this program. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be a heavy lift, um, but I think um, it would, you know, we heard from Laura Baker and the mayor, um, Carolyn is kind of getting out there and um, being the voice of, of support. Um, and I think really going down the list of um, seeing the other stakeholders in the city, and bringing them in on board to a meeting um, might be very fruitful. But uh, I, if you have any questions, um, um, please. Yeah, what is CHAPA again? Community Housing, Community Citizens Housing and Planning Association. There you housing go. And planning Association. Okay, thank you. And um, and and what did you say? This is an M MBHP program or uh, municipal mh and, uh oh they're very similar to mhp or mass housing um mhp being mass housing partnership okay so out in boston but have a lot of housing resources and trainings and um well yeah stuff like that okay and so what kind of trainings do they have I mean, I think the really the biggest training part of this, well, for this program will be kind of the pre-launch and uh, helping us identify stakeholders and um, getting the, the language ready for kind of a launch meeting and having that stakeholders meeting and doing follow-ups. Um, and, you know, them, that's probably geared around a specific project. So we would, uh, you know, if we did it, we would might want to identify a specific project that we would um, focus on. Um, but it, the CHAP itself has other trainings available to planners and citizens that you can take freely um, or on the website. And they have toolkits and all sorts of things. I see, okay. I'm a little confused. Is this a training mostly for city staff or is it for our board or both? Uh, yeah, so the I may have um, mixed the wires there. So CHAP itself has training that's just there and you can take it either online or they have events that you can do that's separate. Uh, this is um, the program is as a way to kind of funnel our energy towards a specific project and kind of build capacity for um, supporting affordable housing, housing in general, um, and really stakeholder engagement. So part of that process would be um, kind of a pre-launch, and that's where I think most of the quote-unquote training for this program would be, where they really help us kind of um, get our language dialed in uh, you know, look at all the stakeholders, um, you know, who we're going to invite, um, and then kind of um, a little bit about running the meeting or follow up once we do the actual kind of uh, launch meeting with our stakeholder group. And Keith, could you define the term stakeholders for this particular purpose? Yeah, it's anybody that would be interested in housing, which would be everyone. Uh, and on their website, they do kind of give a list of uh, potential stakeholders. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's, you know, municipalities, religious organizations, uh, housing advocacy groups, uh, school, um, uh school committees, uh, so they give it kind of examples, nonprofits, cultural groups, veterans agencies, commissions on disabilities, 
planning boards, housing authorities, things like that. Um, so really anyone that is not necessarily focused on housing, um, but has a general uh, audience uh, of people. Other thoughts and questions? So, so as I understand it, Keith, right? This would be, this would give us a leg up in terms of helping us shape our, our messaging, right? Towards specific projects and towards all um, sort of reaching out and towards all other interested parties, right? That's correct. And would that involve something uh, other times aside from housing partnership times? Is it training we could do online? Can you be a little more concrete about that? Um, uh, the program itself, um, I don't think it has any more specific training outside of kind of the pre-launch and kind of getting that ready. Um, there may be things on our website or something that they, they might point you to. To look at. Um, they do link to a few of these things that I just I just read them, uh, but uh, I, I don't believe there is a uh, a course load as as it were. Thoughts, Gwen? Oh, um, okay. So, um, how many of these events would there be? Um, would it be self-paced um, or would it be like, you know, on a set time that um, I'm just, I'm on break right now, but I'm going to have a schedule soon again. And so I just want to have an idea. Yeah, Laura just pasted from the email from Chapa. Uh, it's about a year long process. Um, oh. And uh, just reading kind of, the the little snippets online, you know, I, I'm guessing at least four or five extra meetings outside of the housing partnership meeting. Um, one being the pre-launch, the one after that being the launch, and then maybe a follow-up meeting. So there's at least three, um, but maybe there's a site visit. Um, and one of the things that we haven't done because as long as I've been in there um, here, we've, we've been doing this online through COVID, um, but I think maybe we've talked about it before is having an in-person meeting. So, you know, sometimes when we do this online, it leaves people out who maybe do not know about the meetings um, or do not have internet access. So it might be an opportunity to kind of do this one of these meetings at the Housing Authority or at another event or something like, or hey, something like I, that. I see, I, I'm sorry, Municipal Engagement Initiative Light. Um, I see what Laura wrote here. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for it, you know. I mean, it seems to me like we should definitely say we are very interested, we're in, and then we will just see what the next step is. So I, I would appreciate a vote um, and then I will take that as a, as a go for applying. Okay, does somebody want to make a proposal? How much are we applying for? What's the cost? Uh, there's no money involved, so we're not oh. getting money. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, make a motion for us to do the CHAPA programming. Somebody want to second it? Gordon, seconds. All right, let's take a vote. Richard. Yes. Uh, Hannah. Yes. Ricardo. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Gordon, or Gordon, yeah. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> and I'm a yes, definitely. Motion passed and we will hear more from Keith, right? Okay. All right, let us move back for a moment. We need to talk about the um, 
uh, to approve minutes from November 7th. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve those minutes? Or have any corrections or comments? That was a long time ago, last year. Motion to approve. A second. All right. Gordon? Yes. Richard? Richard, yes. You can't hear Richard. Richard, will you? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Gwen? Yes. Anna? Yes. Edgar? Yes. And me? Yes. All right. November meeting minutes have been approved. Let's go on to updates. Um, I remember the Independent Housing Solutions Project at Franklin Street. Um, this was this is a private endeavor, privately funded with actually quite a bit of um, CPA money. And we had written a letter of support for that last year in the fall. Anyway, I was in touch with them because I, I haven't heard anything, right? So I was in touch with them for an update. And Dr. Bossi wrote me back. She said that um, the place is almost ready. They are waiting, well, they're waiting for the final inspection. 15 mm -hmm. of 16 residents have been, have been, you know, kind of approved or whatever the name is for that. That's not the right name, but 15 right. of 16 residents have been found and vetted and all that. And um, they're planning to have an open house sometime this month, but she didn't know yet exactly the date. Residents should be moving in by February 1st. Wow, so, that's like, wonderful. For, like they're all studio apartments with staff support and, um, you know, kind of people, social worker, medical people come into the actual building. So I'm looking forward to the open house. Um, update on the real estate transfer fee. Ace isn't here. I have no idea. Up, update on real estate broker fee. I um, tried to contact um, Lindsay Sebadosa's office, but I haven't heard anything. I have a feeling that this is probably not the best time of year to do that. They were being, everybody's being sworn in last week and things are just starting up. So um, I don't think there's really much of an update right now, but I'll continue to pursue that. Okay. Any questions or thoughts about those things? Okay, other business. I would like to say one other thing, but does anybody else have anything to say? Laura? Do you guys want at some point just kind of general project updates? Because we have a lot going on in Northampton. Yes, That'd be great. Can you give them to us right now. Now, okay. Yeah. So. We're, we're cooking with gas. No, 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 it's all electric, I take it back. So we are busily preparing these kind of huge funding applications. Two are going in next month. One for the old nursing home property at 737 Bridge Road um, and one for 23 Laurel Street. So the old nursing home is a, a substantial got rehab to create 60, six zero uh, family apartments. And then 20 Laurel Street is 23 Laurel Street is new construction of 20 apartments. Both projects are have gotten zoning approval um, and have begun to raise money from various sources. Um, and I think we're going to go in in the coming CDPG round to ask for well, just a tiny, just a wee bit of money for 23 Laurel Street. Um, construction costs are absolutely bananas. Things are costing crazy amounts of money, but we forge ahead. Um, some of the exciting things we're looking at for the nursing home are, we're, we're hitting hard on alternative energy sources. So we're looking at using both geothermal um, as well as PV to kind of power that system. The city is requiring uh, all of our projects anyway, to be all electric. And so that's a big challenge for us, both in terms of building it and then also being able to afford the electricity costs for the next 99 years. Um, the city put out a request for proposals for that uh, site on Crafts Avenue that Keith mentioned, and uh, we put in our proposal from Valley and we were selected as the developer there. So wow. we'll be working. Hey. <laughs> 
for a lack of comp competitors. <laughs> so um, we'll be working together with uh, Jones Witz at The Architect to try to figure out really how to use uh, that piece of property. It's teeny and it's Which odd. one is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which which one is that, Laura, the it's, little one? It's located at the very toe of Crafts Avenue, so across from Provisions, where okay. there are five parking spaces. That's okay. the site. <laughs> I see. Oh, that little, that so little, that there's little five, park. There's five parking spaces, and then there's the staircase that the city yeah. wants to discontinue because it's in poor condition. So. Right. This would be uh, part retaining wall, part building. Mm -hmm. um, the wonderful thing about it is the location because it's right in the heart of downtown. So the city's priority is for homeless individuals um, to be housed in that location. So that, you know, again, it, it's always a process. Um, and so it's a good example, like Keith said, of a, of a project that might need some outreach, some community education, especially talking to business owners around there about, you know, what's the plan? Why is it happening? How will it be managed? You know, things like that. Okay. So I think that's all I've got at the moment. Oh, and, and the city also uh, got permission, or is about to get permission from the state legislature to free up a parcel on Chapel Street um, Okay. It's next to the recreation area. And the question I think will be, can it, can it accommodate a, a number of units at scale to make it feasible for someone to, to develop affordable housing there? Mm -hmm. So, um, the oh, well, and, the, and, and the nursing home, just if you drive by, um, we're already underway. We got a, almost a million dollars from the state through the underutilized properties program. Yes. And so that money is dedicated to removing the asbestos. Yes. From the building. Yes. Which is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You wondered. That's, it's everywhere. Right. That's um, really, really good. And so that's really a, a prelude to anyone's ability to reuse the building. Um, right. It was a significant barrier to either taking it down or reusing it. Um, obviously mm -hmm. we're intending to reuse it, so. Thank you so much, Laura. Wow. <laughs> Amazing updates, Gwen. Um, there's a new call for, um, there. I think there are three more Habitat for Humanity houses going up. Um, they're opening up a lottery. They're gonna be having mm -hmm. three more three bedrooms. One is gonna be a one floor level and two are gonna be double stories. And so, um, the double stories are going to have a single bath, a half bath on the first floor, a full bath on the second floor, and there's going to be shed storage. Um, I got that notification this week. Mm -hmm. Cool. You know, um, before I forget, I want to just respond, Laura, and say around businesses and other really other stakeholders who are in that area, right, of Crafts Ave. Um, I don't know if anybody saw the letter um, written by residents and business people at Old Commons, you know, the Sullivan building. Um, they wrote a letter to the editor. Did anybody else see it? Welcoming the Resilience Hub next door to them. Oh. And, and basically saying, you know, these, this is, we are so happy that this Resilience Hub will be right next door. Um, we, we support this initiative, we support, you know, um, these kind of services and as people may say to us, well, what would you think? What do you think? You know, these people are going to be quote unquote hanging around. Well, they say, you know, people who are unhoused are, are, are there anyway. And it was really a great letter. It was in Friday's Gazette. I recommend you all look it up. And that brings me to one other point, which is that I believe I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, when I say that as we can, any of us can write a letter to the editor. We don't have to say we're on the housing partnership. We can write a letter to the editor about housing issues. And this helps inform and I think elevate a discussion and people's thoughts about affordable housing. So I actually responded to that letter and I hope my letter might be published this week, just really, 
saying, this is so great. This, this letter made me so happy and we need, we need more people to stand up for this. And I took the opportunity to kind of mention some of the affordable housing uh, projects that you just mentioned, Laura, that are that are going on here, and and saying to people, you know, you may have an opportunity, you know, afford an affordable unit may be coming to your neighborhood, and that will be your opportunity. You stand up and say, yes, I welcome my my new neighbors. So that's one thing we can all do. Housing partnership aside, I have a question. Um, yes, and I don't know if Laura can answer this. Um, what about the wasn't there um, like a VFW or something where they were originally going to put the, the 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 dog kennel and then people disagreed and so now it was decided there was going to be a few families, a few condominiums going in there. Do you have any updates? Yeah. Oh, Keith might have an update on that. Yeah, yeah, that, was most, yeah that was the Moose Lodge. Uh, the dog kennel was shot down. Uh, we used CBG money to demolish the Moose Lodge and now we're preparing it for housing, probably three or four houses, there's ledge up there and wetlands. So it's a very con constrained site, but we want to maintain access to the um, conservation area. Um, and we have to do that within the bounds of the, the rock and swamp. Does everybody know where the Moose Lodge was? It's the end of Cook Avenue, right behind Walmart, and it's one of the entrances to Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. Very popular mm -hmm. entrance, beautiful, beautiful site. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, so the dog kennel was able to be, you know, Smith Volk offered to have the dog kennel there after years of I think pushing back and saying they didn't want it. They decided to have it there. They're having a companion animal program there as well. Mm -hmm. And so that 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 allowed a number of things to happen, I think. Will those will those be affordable? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the it'll probably be a mix, uh, you know, mostly affordable and maybe one or two market, but it's still we're still looking at um the site and what we can put there before we decide on the actual number of units. Okay, I see. Any other comments from anybody else? Thanks for that update, Laura. That's like huge. I would really appreciate you and Valley CBC and you being here in the updates. Any other business not anticipated? I do wanna say one thing and that is that Richard you're bringing up on a number of occasions how the housing partnership used to review affordable housing applications that were CDBG requested funding. And, and, and Edgar, you were also mentioning that today, right? And how things have moved away. I mean, I see how that can have taken housing partnership out of a more centralized location in terms of decision making and knowledge. And mm -hmm. I I don't know if any of you looked at or responded to the survey that was sent to you. I think I sent it around and maybe you got it from other sources, a survey um, of current or past committee members. But a number of those survey questions had to do with, you know, do you know, I mean, how how did your application go to volunteer? And do you know, do you have knowledge of of the applicant pool and how decisions are made. And, you know, we're several people short here. I have no idea how that, how those decisions are made, who's in the applicant pool around volunteers, if people have been languishing. And it just made me think about, Richard, what you and Edgar have said here about how, you know, there's sort of like, sort of like a gap there in our knowledge and functioning within the city. and. I think it would be really nice to reclaim that. Anyway, that's something I noticed and I, yeah, obviously at some point was a little different. Any other thoughts? Uh, my only other thought is that we, that Agardo, I think he got booted out of the meeting when we were deciding on oh, yeah. how want to work on a subcommittee, but now he's back. So, so he could say if he wants to be on that or not. 
Oh, yeah, no, I was just saying that I will reach out to folks and uh, try to uh, convene us. Okay, sounds good. Great. Anything else at all? Uh, just to the subcommittee members, just make sure I get uh, an agenda and a link at least 48 hours so I can post it. That's all. Okay, great. Um, should should we notify, you know, the city of Northampton about this meeting, um, these meetings, or they be recorded or? That's that's what uh, Keith's job is. That's why we need to keep them in the loop. Okay. Yeah. Just Thanks. Send me, send me the uh, meeting information and I'll make an agenda. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you three for continuing with that. All right. Thanks everybody for a great discussion. Um, appreciate all of your voices and look forward to meeting next month. Great. Have a Bye. good night. Thank you. Bye folks. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.